they say you know you know what they say you don't get paid by the hour so I, I tr I'm trying to you know like finish guys as fast as I can and all those rounds that I've learned like the lessons that I've learned are you know from sparring rounds so download the all-star app Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Since the last time we talked, you've had two more wins for LFA. Uh, a 14-second head kick knockout and then a second round knee bar at LFA 152. Let's uh, talk about the head kick first. You know, It was a step back counter head kick. I think that's very rare in MMA, was that just something that was instinct or was it something that you saw ahead of the fight? Uh, training, at, I've been training for, since I was like 14. So it's, there's a lot of things that I still don't know, but I do in the gym. So I felt, I, I felt like in that moment, it was just like my eyes just saw it and then my leg just instantly just whipped up. But I, I felt that was more of instinct. Okay. With uh with quick finishes like that, man, is it bittersweet since you don't get to show or even test things out like techniques in fights? I um uh, not really. I uh they say, you know, you know what they say, you don't get paid by the hour. So I I tr I'm trying to, you know, like finish guys as fast as I can and all those rounds that I've learned, like the lessons that I've learned are, you know, from sparring rounds. So um LFA 152 your last fight last February, you know, if you ask anyone ahead of the fight, they would have said, you know, it'd be the last thing they would expect from you to get a leg lock finish in that fight. You know, are, are knee bars something that you, you hit in, in training a lot? Yeah, that, that move was, uh, I, I hit that like thousands of times in, in training and I, I have a couple more of my sleeves, but, uh, you know, I, I've been knocking a lot of people out. So, their game plan is just going in there and taking me down and testing my ground game. But, you know, I'm I'm going to show them, like, they don't want to go to the ground with me because, I, in my opinion, I feel like my ground game is a lot better than my striking. But my striking is catching up to my grappling now, too. So it's, it's whatever they want, you know? For sure. Um, how do you feel about how you performed in that first round? That first round? I felt like I did I did well. I, I held myself uh, well in that round. A lot of... There's some things that a lot of people don't know about that fight. Going into that fight, the week of the fight, I rolled my ankle. And I have been just working with one leg the whole time, like during the whole camp, because I uh, I got my one of my kick got checked. And it hurt my foot. And literally the whole camp, four weeks, I was just training with my lead leg only. You know, and then going to fight, fight week, I rolled my ankle on the same leg. And a lot of people didn't know that, but I had to work with what I had. And going into that fight, I knew my opponent was, you know, like he was a very good kickboxer as well. So in my head, I don't want to play that game with him, you know, just because I'm compromised. So that's why I did that, you know, fake glove touch into a takedown. But, um, you know, I had to do what I had to do and it showed. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I don't really remember. Did you have your ankle taped up during the fight? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I didn't want him to know, you know? Okay. All right. Do you think there's something to that? Like if someone has something taped up that it's some kind of injury? Oh, for sure. For okay. sure. But that's why that's why a lot of fighters, they tape both of their ankles so you don't know which one it is. But since they tape both of it, you know, like one of them has got to be hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, in our last interview, you talked about studying like stocks and, and option trading. How's that going? Are you still doing that? Not a lot lately. I just started again, and um, I'm starting to make a little bit of money. But it's uh, it's hard to you know like not be greedy. <laughs> you know, I now I'm learning. Uh, you know, like I've lost a, a lot of money just like being greedy and don't know what I'm doing. But now since since then I bought like a lot of courses and I've been doing my own studying and you know putting my percentage of like when do i want to get out when do i want to enter and then just stick with my game plan and you know like going into a fight you got to have a strategy so when you go into a trade you got to have an exit strategy and an entering strategy yeah you can't get too excited right like you said you can't get too greedy <laughs> <laughs> dude like i feel like trading stocks really boost up my mental game bro my emotional game because you enter with your money 
And then you're like, okay, it's going to go down, so I'm going to buy puts. And then it start going up, going up, going up. And you're like, fuck, I'm, I got to get out of here. And then you're like, no, I'm going to be, you know, it's going to go down. But then, you know, like you run out of time and then, you know, you got to cut your losses. So just trading stocks, bro, it taught me so much about just like the emotional game of like of life and how to deal with my own emotions. So I felt like that's what I got out of stocks. All right. There you go, man. It's good to see that you're doing something outside of uh, fighting and, and it's actually making you some money. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, you do things that it doesn't make you money. It just, it's kind of mm -hmm. like a dead, dead end road. Um, yeah. Your upcoming fight, man. Go ahead. Yeah. That's something that I'm really passionate about too. Like outside of fighting, like I don't want to get stuck inside the matrix system, you know, like working a nine to five for the rest of my life. So outside of fighting, I just try to find like other ways to make money to keep myself out of that. Now you got a fight coming up, LFA 158, Edwin De Los Santos. You're supposed to fight him earlier this year at LFA 149 in January. Why was that fight canceled? He got injured the week of the fight. Damn, that must have sucked to yeah, that, train. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so, I, I had the chance to eat, so I'm not really complaining. <laughs> How tough are the, the weight cuts for you? It was, when I first started, it was pretty tough. But now I fell so many times and, you know, people give me so much shit about, like, missing weight. But, you know, like, I cut a lot of weight just to get down to 125. But now, since I, I fell so much at doing it, I've tried so many other ways, you know. And now I feel like I have, I have a way to get down there as, as uh, in, the, in the path of least resistance. Okay, so you found your, your secret. To get yes, your weight down. Okay. All right. Yeah, you got to do it before you hit like the, the big league, so to say. Yeah. You exactly. don't want to miss weight over there. That, that's big yeah. money that you're going to, mm -hmm. you're going to cough up, huh? Yeah. All right. And uh, with training, man, you did a camp for him last year and the last year. Now you're heading into a camp again. Is there anything different that you switched up for, for this camp? Have you done a camp, a double camp for somebody before? Yes. Dude, I, I literally, bro, I do this, like, every day, and this is my lifestyle, so I, I don't really think about it as a camp, but whenever you have an opponent, you do want to, you do want to have a strategy, a, like, a strategy against that specific guy, but, you know, I just treat it as, you know, getting better every day and exploring new things with my, with, you know, like, with moves and just learning how to move my body more efficiently, and that's been my life ever since I was, like, 14, you know? For sure, and... What do you think of uh, Edwin in, in the fighting style? Are you pissed off that he, he pulled out? Is is there any emotions heading into this fight? Not really. Like, I'm going to make him pay for pulling out, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. so fucking late into the fight. Because I, you know, I, as MMA fighter, like, upcoming, like, you don't make a lot of money. So everything that goes into that camp, it went into, like, my credit card debt, you know? So, <laughs> but other than that, I, I don't really feel too much emotion going into it. It's always about business for me. But uh, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to put on a show like I always do and, you know, put on the fireworks. This year, have you done any like cross training? I know you're based at MMA Lab, but any any outside training from that? No, I just I feel like um, I've been training for a long time. And, you know, like you, I've, you know, like you uh, when, when you train for that long is like there's nothing new to learn. You know, you just learn how to put things together in a different way. And come up with an, another answer for the same question. So for me, it's just like m right now I'm on a path of self-development. You know, like learning everything myself and just being a self-thinker. Right. And who has been the the people, like the small core that has been with you, like for this camp in particular, to help you prepare for, for Edwin? Of course, my coaches, uh, my, my coach Randy Steinke and coach John Crouch. Mm -hmm. And... For my grappling, I've been working with uh, Livio. I forgot his last name, but he is a black belt in jujitsu and number number five black belt in the world. So I've been training a lot with him just from just my ground game and, you know, like making sure I'm crossing my T's and dot, dotting my I's. And mm -hmm. I've been working with my wrestling also with Mario Bautista. And, you know, Mario is a fucking beast. So yeah. if I can hang with him, like I can hang with anybody. For sure. And when you when you train with somebody that's like a an expert at like one aspect of MMA, which is the grappling side, and you're going to lose, man, in training a lot, probably. And 
how do you handle that, man? How do you pick yourself back up? Because, you know, like this game is mental too. You have to kind of, you know, fight the, the small battles every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I just take it as another opportunity to get better. All right. Um, what do you see in this one, man? Do you see a, a long fight? Do you see something that might go into the third round, which that has never happened, but possibility? You know, Edwin is pretty tough. And I, I'm not going to count him out. But, you know, like my fighting style, I'm tough as fuck, too. And I like to fight, you know, and I don't like my fights lasting too long. But I am prepared for all three rounds, you know. I'm going in there. I'm going to take his fucking head off. And uh, I saw that uh, you had a couple fights left with LFA. And you, you plan on fighting those fights and, and then, you know, seeing where the opportunities lie. You know, when, when they were talking about, uh, and we talked, to, and I asked you about this last time, about uh, Road to UFC, right, the tournaments that they have to, to get the contract. It's kind of like Contender Series, but you just have to fight a couple of times. Did you, did you have any interest mm -hmm. in that? My goal, bro, is my end goal is to be a world champion in the UFC. So it doesn't really matter, Contender Series or, you know, Road to UFC or whoever I fight. You know, like mentally, I feel like I'm the champion of, the, of that weight class. So it doesn't matter who I fight or what path I take, I'm going to get there. You plan on being there in 2024? Is that the is that the mindset for you right now? That's the goal. I after this one, I only have one more with the LFA, and maybe who knows? After this one, I might go into the contender series. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, man. It's going to be exciting to see what happens this year. This year seems like the year for you, and uh, and it seems like the UFC they love the the young, hungry. You know. You got the highlights, you know what I mean? They love the highlights as well. But before that happens, man, May 19th, LFA 158, Chandler, Arizona, which is probably not too far from, from where you're at. Uh, everybody go in the descriptions, download the All-Star app. Thank you so much, man, for the time today. And, uh, yeah, man, all the best in this fight. And hopefully we talk uh, ahead of your next one. Yeah, it was good catching up, brother. Thank you so much for having me on your show.